Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, he scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyer Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and we are proud to present the Eliminator Series, and last night, uh, Carolina Hurricanes were eliminated from the NHL playoffs, the number one seed in the Central. We are joined, that's right, joined by the great, the mighty Perlo Wisdom. How you doing, buddy? Good. Mighty now. I haven't really oh, had mighty you know. too often. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's every, been a while since every, the words mighty in me came together. Hey, man, you know. I think was, it was like mighty disappointment might have been one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one right there for sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, thanks, buddy. Yeah, this is yeah, awesome. Man. <laughs> yeah, man, we're going to we're gonna dive into uh, the fact that, unfortunately, the Carolina Hurricanes lost yeah. uh, quite handedly to um, yeah. uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, mm -hmm. They just ran into that juggernaut. And they were eliminated from the uh, playoffs for this year now. And Tampa Bay is going to sit back now and wait for the winner of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> is it the uh, Boston and uh, New York? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so uh, that's, um, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, we talked about this like when we covered the uh, Toronto, Montreal, about what it means to be a warrior. And, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Carolina has that mentality. They have that mentality. The only problem I think is is that they were missing quite a few of their key players at at, a, at key stretches during throughout this playoffs. Um, not with just this series, but the series before even. You know what I mean? And the fact that they were kind of, I mean, Nadelkovic played well, but not well enough. Morozik played, came in and played well for one game, and then that was it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I, yeah. I don't know, man. What do you think? Well, Nadelkovich gets his gets the experience. Um, uh, we were when we were talking in the regular season before the regular season. We were talking about. I was really. I was hoping that they would go out and get a veteran. But I get it. It's not about this year. They're looking long term. Nadelkovich is their goaltender of the future, and the only way to get experience is give experience. So. That's just the way it is. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not... Nadelkovich played well, especially for his age and who he is, a rookie and all that stuff like that, but you're talking about Vasilevsky here. And when we're getting, we're talking about winning cups, I had him go into the... Carolina go into the finals, but looking Me back too. on it, it's pure heart. It, like, that, yep. I just want this team to win. Yeah. I was... Hey, man, I was in the same boat. It was a heart play. That's it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm not. I wasn't a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning this year, but they, they did it. They did it. However, they did they, it. Um, and they they brought everybody back at the right time. They got everybody. Uh, they took it easy in the regular season. They really did. I watched a lot of the games. They're outplayed like, way towards, too often. They, towards, they relied like the, on Vasilevsky the last, too much. The last half of the season, they were not quite playing up to their usual par self. There. No. But, not at all. Yeah. When when mm -hmm. John and I do a John from Off the Wall Hockey and I do a show called uh, Off the Wall Hockey. Go figure. And yeah, on, coincidentally. On, on Fridays at uh, between eight and ten live every Friday. Uh -huh. And we have one of our segments in that and the show there is the uh, the power uh, levels of each team, right? Mm -hmm. So. What, what level is each team at? You know what I mean? And when you start seeing uh, Tampa Bay dropping off that list, we were picking the top five, right? And this was called the top shelf power uh, teams in the, in the league, right? right. So when you, when you see Tampa Bay on there for the first, like, you know, half of the season, and then after that you start seeing them drop down the list, and then you start seeing them not being on the list, and then it was like, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I... I see what you mean, though, with Tampa Bay, like mm -hmm. not playing 
quite as well towards the end of the season. I mean, they were leading up until that point, and then they just, I mean, they were, what, the fourth seed? Yeah, even when they were winning lots, but especially in the second half, the ones that they were winning, a lot of the time they were relying so much on Vasilevsky. It was crazy. But uh, anyways, they, you know, it made sense in a lot of ways. The whole narrative this year was completely different where you have this compact and they played later than anybody except for Dallas last year. So, you know, winning the cup and then having the party and, all of this stuff like that, maybe it obviously was a smart move to take it easy on some of these players and just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what was going on in that room. I know one thing though, is Cooper is an absolutely brilliant coach and doesn't get enough credit because he's got such a great team. Uh, he's 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 a fantastic coach and uh, he, I don't know how he did it, what he did, but somehow he was able to find that balance. Because there was a lot of times on the bench, Cooper, to me, looked like he was very frustrated with his team. So it's almost like Cooper wasn't the one doing this. Right. It was almost like the players were kind of instinctively saying, I know what I need to say for the playoffs, so I'm going to do this maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know what the whole dynamics about it was, but I, when I watched Tampa play, I was like, this team's not going to be able to do anything in the playoffs. But – Turn it on. Remember, we were talking about that. I was like, are they really going to be able to just turn it on? Well, they answered it. Yep, they Not did. Not only did they turn it on for the first series, mm-hmm. um, and that was a hard-fought series against Florida. Mm-hmm. That really was because Florida played them really, really tough. That was a physical series. Right? Yeah. And I thought, and then the same thing that was going on with Carolina happened with in, in Nashville. Carolina-Nashville series was a tough series especially yeah. for Carolina. I mean, you know, to, to, to lose Nita Ryder and Trocek for stretches of time in this second round, especially against Tampa Bay, I think really hurt them. And then all losing the first two games was mm. not really the best way to start a series, really. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of which they really did outplay Tampa Bay, too. That was a thing. And then Tampa Bay... I saw I, I was saw the stats on it. Um, Carolina's Corsi numbers were better. They were getting the possession play, but Tampa Bay was getting the high quality shots, and they were getting into those. And we were talking about this the being the warrior mentality, and you said Carolina has it. I think Carolina is learning it, and they're wanting to have it, and they're growing into it. But I don't think they're there yet. It takes okay. time. And we just did one on Toronto where Marner and stuff like that. Dude, Marner's only 27 years old. Learning yeah, to be a warrior. is very young. Learning to be a warrior is not something that just happens overnight. You cannot, you cannot uh, duplicate what it is to be in the NHL playoffs anywhere in your career. It's not the same in junior. It doesn't matter. AHL, wherever you go, it's, it's this is on levels that are – it's – it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, intense, and you know, putting everything aside to be, uh, to put in, put in every shift, every move, everything you do, is to win at that moment at the highest intensity possible that you can possibly do. Yeah. There's nowhere that you ever do that in your career, and it's something that is learned. Yeah, you know, some people have it naturally. But. I was just going to say, you know, that's something else, too, that there's a lot of people out there that kind of have it naturally, that have that warrior mentality naturally. You yeah. know what I mean? And and it shows in their play. Like, I always use the example of, uh, they used to call him, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, he doesn't like this nickname, so I, I won't really call it, but it, it was a cartoon that used to happen on, on Looney Tunes, but uh, Troy Palomalu. I okay. Mean, the, I mean, that guy to me is just a warrior mentality all the way through. Like he mm-hmm. to me wasn't a, a safety; he was a football player. Yeah. Do you know what I'm right. saying? You know, like some of these hockey players, you look at them and go, "Yeah, I don't see him as a defenseman or a center. I see him as a hockey player." Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm I saying? See. But it's it still transcends. You can still have that warrior mentality no matter what sport you're in. 
You yeah, you I mean? can. Yeah, you can. Def- yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, in every sport, you have to have that. No doubt about it. Um, but it's not just that, too, because it's having that intensity, but also having a a leveled heart rate while you do it. Yeah, because you got to because you can't back tire yourself out at the same time. So you have to have this steely. It's freaking, it's a balance that is really difficult to have. You're keeping your heart rate down. You're completely confident in your abilities, but you're playing. And, you know, natural guys at it, Stone in Vegas, the Felinos, like I've mentioned a million times, Perry. Perry learned it. Perry's early career, he burnt himself out. Yeah. He had to learn this. You know, it's something that you you said. It's something that you said takes, you know, look. You can teach uh, a guy how to to be a faster hockey player. You can teach a guy to be a better hockey player positionally by putting him in those best positions. But yeah. you you got to at some point you got to have some talent. <laughs> you oh, yeah. you know what I mean? At, at some point you got to be able to reach down and, and pull out. Hey, look, I got a little talent here. You know. <laughs> yeah. But you got to have a leader, I find anyways. It seems that there has to be leaders in that to show people what it looks like. Yeah. And remember when Montreal did that, they put Stahl and those guys in there in and they didn't game. put the kids in and everybody's yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah. And I, go, and I, I said, I, well, I, I think what... you were crazy, dude. I thought you were like, what are you... Prove I thought... Wrong. Yeah, you prove me yeah. wrong. Yeah. Because I thought, this is what he's doing. He's showing these kids what that looks like. This is what we're trying to do here. So this is what we're doing. I think Carolina need, had that with Williams. And they really need another guy like that. Yeah. So I, I think they should go out with, uh, they should go. They got a coach that did it. That's the thing. But you can only, it's much easier to coach when you have a, an emblem to say that guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Be what like I'm that saying guy, yeah. is that guy right there. Right yeah. now, I don't think they have it, have it in their life. Slavin is really close. Right. You know, they have Dougie some Hamilton guys. Dougie Hamilton is that guy. I don't think he is that guy. No, I mean, Dougie Hamilton is not that guy. Yeah. Um, no. You know. But, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think Slavin is, is like, just a hair to starboard, you know, on, yeah. on that. It's better to have a guy that's been there, done but that. But he was also couple. missing for good portions of yeah. – the, the, of the first two series as well too yeah. so mm. that really really hurt carolina Big where time. everything was basically mm. on nadelkovich yeah okay too much, and, too much on nadelkovich that, see that's what i'm talking about okay so when when you suddenly have to put everything on such a young goaltender you know mm-hmm. like i think that's what the flyers tried to do a little bit they tried to just go okay all right, we got this great goaltender. I be the savior, cool, and yeah. and, and it was too much. Uh, I yeah. mean, there's no shame in that, but you're right. He got some really good, valuable experience. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, when we talk about goaltenders of the future, you have to look at this guy as being one of those potential guys that. Oh, for sure. You know, could be you know one of those Vesna Trophy winning guys in the future. Now, he's one of those cool ones, too, because he's the guy that fought to get there. He yeah. didn't have all the natural talent of a yeah, Patrick Wall you know, or, and he's a little Price bit older, or something you know, like that. Yeah. He had to fight hard to learn the game in the NHL. So I think he's going to be great exactly. down the road. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So anyways, that's, that's, you know, it's going to be... I think it's going to be interesting to see who they add in the offseason. I think that's there There will be well, some you, adding in the offseason. Well, you here. already mentioned it. You know, you mm. think that they need to get that um, that leader, that you natural know, that natural leader guy that can come in and be the you know the one that shows them how to get to the promised land. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. Now, yeah. the the issue is going to be: is that player going to be available to them? Well, I mentioned one. He's going to be available, Felino. Right. But I don't know if they can get him. He can go wherever he wants. So I right. think he's going to go back there's with his going brother. To potentially be, yeah, there's going to potentially be some guys from Tampa Bay that are going to be available. There's going to be potentially some guys from Vegas. Coleman, Goudreau. You know, that will be available. Potentially kind of some other teams that are going to have some guys that will be available that they might yeah. be able to pluck 
or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Uh, but, but but you're right. I agree with you. There is a lot of players in there that are growing with that mentality. You can tell. Nietzsche's Aho. It doesn't necessarily mean you're the toughest guy or anything like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah, yeah. No, mean no, no, that. No. It just means that you there's you're you you're, you're able to you're able to live in that intensity for long periods of time and know that that's the where you're getting to get to through the regular season. That's what we're growing to become is that. that. Yeah, you get that you get that whole Captain America, man, I can do this all day. Yeah. That's right. what I was so surprised, and as much as I said I didn't like the Lightning this year, I, I have to give them complete kudos now, because to just turn it on like that to me is just unfathomable. Not and really. I don't know if it's still going to be able to go through the whole playoffs, but it's un, it's unfathomable to me. But not, Stamkos is a good example. Not Stamkos. only did they just turn it on, mm -hmm. okay, but Kucherov came out in the first game of the first series and yeah. scored two goals and yeah. was very relevant in the Florida series right from jump. Yeah. Okay. And so was Stamkos right mm. along with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that to me, I think was the huge issue that, you know, I was like, yeah, I don't really, I, I, I had doubts about Tampa Bay going in because I felt that, with Kucherov missing the whole year and, and with Stamkos coming in, that they were going to be rusty and Florida was playing really, really well. They were the number one, you know, or the, the number two seed, you know, they were a higher seed than Florida or than Tampa Bay. And I thought Florida with, you know, the goaltending was coming alive a little bit there in Florida. They were playing really well and Tampa Bay really played them hard. And that was a tough series against them. Okay, and yeah. they came out and played and just took those first two games from Carolina. Yeah, the in other thing, Carolina, they yeah, the mean, other, they just walked into their building and said, "Yeah, I'll take those first two things." Yeah, the, the other thing was uh, that they were Carolina's biggest strength is their puck moving from their defense, right? That's the and and they have a lot of defensemen that can move up in the play. Even guys that don't even get a lot of points normally right. still are able to do it. They just do it in a different way, like Pesci, who, by the way, you can put in that category that we were just talking about. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you know, Slavin Hamilton, all those guys like that, they can they can uh, even uh, Jake Bean, their new their yeah. new young guy who looks yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. They're all great at moving the puck up, right? And they were trying to force the play. So what happened was, is the the defensemen are playing up. Brindamore wants them to be aggressive. So Tampa Bay starts doing long passes up the middle and f nailing them, nailing them. Like uh, Hedman and, you know, they go, hey, we got some pretty good defensemen here too. <laughs> uh, and they were nailing it up the middle, forcing that defense to play back. They started almost floating guys in behind them and forcing the defense to play back. Exactly. And that took really the biggest strength from Carolina away. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. In or it was an interesting series. Uh, again, it's one of those to Tampa Bay's been there, done that. Uh, it's difficult to beat teams like that, but to, to basically just dismantle Carolina like that. Now you, you have to say that, you know, Maraza came in and stole that game. Okay. And uh -huh. Nadelkovich played really, really well in the games that he was in. He played uh -huh. really well. I mean, you know, he, you could tell, though, that he made some very rookie mistakes and, and allowed some of, and some of the goals that were scored on him were scored by rookie mistakes. That, yeah. you, know, that you would have seen more, more veteran goalies would have probably have made some of those saves. Not all of them, but maybe a couple of them. Right. He made a lot of saves that right. a lot of goaltenders couldn't, couldn't save. Make. Okay, that's but, the other but side. But when we're of it. talking about playoff goaltenders, yes. They just basically don't make mistakes hardly. Like exactly. maybe one one a series if you're lucky. Like mm -hmm. lucky. That's a terrible thing about goaltending, right? People will say, you know, yeah, it's always on the goaltender. Well, yeah, it is. 
Sorry. Sorry. It's the I mean, most important position out there. If you're I mean, a goaltender and you're not guy, he's, he's the last yeah. guy. <laughs> I mean, like, apart from like Sorry. what happened with Boston with Rask, when yeah. you're playing, when you have a defense that's playing that poorly, that's a little different. But yeah. Carolina's defense wasn't playing really that poorly. Uh, and, uh, you know, he just made a couple mistakes in that series that you can't make that like is I not said. really his fault because he's yeah. a kid. He's like just I learning. said, like I said, he made some rookie mistakes that probably a more veteran goalie probably would not have made. And, mm. and those saves probably would have been made or those shots probably wouldn't have happened because he would have been at a different angle or whatever the case was. I mean, I'm not yeah. a goalie. I never played, so I don't know. But, you know, I'll tell you what. Here's the thing. I think the future looks very bright in Carolina. Um, oh, yeah. um, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't sure. matter that they're going to be drafting in the, you know, the the lower 20s this year um, for the draft because of where yeah. they finished and all that. That's well, not going to matter. They're great at drafting anyway. So. Right. And they have been throughout the entire Brindamore tenure of which he signed an extension. So that entire group is going to be back, I think, in, in, a, in a much better form. And Look out yep. for them next year and the years coming because they're just going to be older and more experienced and they're going to be able to continue bringing up their players and developing their players and things like that. So yeah, The only thing I'd be looking for, and I, you know, last year I was hoping they got a veteran to play one playoff, kind of show help Nadelkovich out a little bit. But this year I don't think you can go that way now. You already gave the kid experience. It's time to just keep on rolling with right. them. You might as well, uh, yeah. You might as well. Maybe if you could find a veteran and I'm, I'm uh, that has won a cup before that's very, very veteran, you know, that doesn't mind taking a step back, that's not planning to be the number one that there. wants to be like the mentor type of guy. That That's exactly what he wants to do now. Maybe he wants to be a goalie coach after his career or something yeah, like that. You. Yeah, hey. that's really good with those kind of young players. Maybe that. And then, like I said, uh, if you could get a Felino, that'd be beautiful. Or you know, Brandon Saad had has won cups in Chicago. Um, he he would definitely know that type of mentality that's needed there. You know, a guy like that. But yeah. besides that, they've got Seth Jarvis coming. Yeah. That kid just ripped it and ripped it up in the AHL. Uh, like you said, they got they they drafted extremely extremely well. Noel Gundler's probably not ready, but no, you but might see Seth still, Jarvis, though, Jarvis yeah. next year. Still though, their prospect pool is really deep, and they they look like they're they're going to be you know a good team here, especially uh, in the very near future. Yeah, well, th there you have it, folks. Uh, we wrapped up Carolina, and we think that they're going to be a good team in the future. Um, it was kind of sad to see him lose. We were all kind of rooting for Rod Brindamore and the Hurricanes to with all heart. Um, oh, but yeah. well, Hold Hold <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, they they ran into the juggernaut of the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning. Um, I still would have to put Rod Brindamore in there and the finalist for the Jack Adams. All day yeah, long. I, I, I well, I got like I said, it's 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 him, Q, or I don't know who else we had there, but I think it's between him and Q. Him and Q. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. Well, man, I tell you what, Perlo, it was great having you on. It was great uh, sharing all your great insight. You know what I mean? That's why we do these, because we have such great insight and such great rapport. Tell the folks how we can find you and where we can get all your great stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, talking about the whole Brian and Saad thing actually came up on my show, which you can watch between 3 and 5 Eastern, five days a week on the Perlo. On my, just go to Perlo Wisdom and YouTube and on the channel, search it. I'm pretty sure there's no other Perlo Wisdom out there. I'll probably pop up. You can uh, subscribe to that. Oh, Come on me. the channel. <laughs> there is nobody like Perlo Wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Come on the channel. We talk about this kind of oh, stuff for two stuff, hours Check it every out. day. But like I said, Brendan Saad came up. One of the, I think it was Bill T or something. We were yeah. we did a thing where we were looking at every free agent and where they might go in the off season. It's very interactive. You guys can put in your thing, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, come check me out there. And then, of course, I'm part of the Steel Flyers All Sports website that is absolutely crushing it, and you really want to go check it out. It's hitting like crazy. We're getting hits more and more every month. So more and more. For sure, man, for sure. Yep. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, I'm your host, Steel Flyers. You can find me on Twitter at SteelFlyers52, and you can also check us out on the web at www.steelflyers.com. Check us out. Thank you very much for joining us. Just remember, folks, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.